In this episode of Carpe Diem. A good night's sleep, is that nothing but a dream for you? The benefits of sleep are as important as diet and exercise for a healthy life. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome. On this show, we'll be talking sleep. Why do so many of us have trouble getting our beauty rest? Let's start the show with someone that sure knows how to fill their waking hours. Today's Zippy Zoomer. One, two, three, go on. You did really well. You're so beautiful, aren't you? Ow, ow, ow! Not serious. Oh, you're gonna go. We are back with our Zippy Zoomer. We're here in Vancouver this week with Dr. Anne McDonald at the only strictly bird hospital in Canada. Oh my gosh, look at this. What I have come to realize is that is that this is what I love. And yes. that is the whole thing. And I saw Jurassic Park, and when the scientist lies down on top of one of the dinosaurs, and you just see how he just strokes this dinosaur, and it's that same sort of feeling that yeah. you realize that you just absolutely love the species. You know, it's just, it's a passion, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know, for quite a while, like probably even for a year's time, I don't think I got more than five hours sleep. This has happened because she's been bitten by another parrot. I don't know how she does it, honestly. I don't know how a lot of them do it. I know they get calls in in the middle of the night and that sort of thing. And from what I hear, it's always crazy busy here. And of course, this is where they took care of Canuck. And you know, she's just an amazing woman. Hey, bud. Oh, don't like that guy. She was getting attacked by so a raven. So you're saving him. Yeah. Aww, Aww, Dr. So McDonald's an angel, and I love her so much. I know she's always here if we need her. <laughs> so we called it the Night Albert Hospital because we're a night emergency clinic. I would work at the clinic for five days a week. Then I'd go to Vancouver Island for two days a week. I'm just going to get my stethoscope out. Okay, so her heart is pretty slow. A beautiful beat. We have six more Amazons that need homes. So there you go. If you want to adopt a bird, you can't have a lily, but you can have one of the other yeah. ones. We're going to head back to the studio with Carmen. If you have a Zoomer to nominate, don't forget to nominate them at zippyzoomer at carp.ca. Hey, rest of her. <laughs> well, Dr. Ann just said she only needs five hours or only sleeps five hours. How many hours do you get? I probably sleep six to six and a half hours. Dr. Ann gets woken up uh, for me, uh, emergencies with animals. I get woken up because my baby gets up and she needs to be fed. So that's uh, my disruption recently. Yeah, and that's unavoidable. How about you, Luke? I get my seven and a half hours at least, typically. Yeah, yeah pr I sleep pretty well. Um, you know, and the metric of that is how do I feel during the day? Am I tired during the day? And you're not? Generally not, but I have the advantage of being able to take a nap. <laughs> so that's ah, what it, yeah. The siestas, we like yeah. those. How about uh, you, Jeff? No, I, I used to get around five and a half hours of sleep, just like uh, Dr. Ann. It, it didn't bother me. I would get up regularly at 5.30, in bed by 11, drift off maybe 11.30. Um, no adverse effects that I knew of. That's pretty good. I'm always struggling to get more sleep, so that's why this panel is really interesting to me. When we come back, we'll discuss how much sleep we really need as we age and why we can't seem to get enough. But first, your experience with snoozing. I do actually find I'm getting a, a little bit less sleep, and I'm not sure why. I used to need the uh, standard eight hours, and now it's uh, seven, or sometimes less. <laughs> it's probably about seven and a half hours a night. I am really sleeping less. However, I have unusual sleeping habits. Carpe diem, seizing the day for Canadians as we age. We have a panel that is going to give us tips, tell us about the latest research and share the challenges associated with sleep. Why do we need it? Let's go to Idea City to find out. Brains shut themselves off from the outside world each and every day for hours on end. Why? 
Well, we live now in a pool of readily accessible knowledge, ideas, we're getting them today, inventions and technologies from all over the world. In our day life, we sample, teach, and interact with this pool of knowledge, ideas, inventions, and technology. But in our nightlife, the brain rewiring optimizes our cognition, our creativity, and insight, and then something wonderful happens. We put knowledge back into that expanding pool. Our experiences with those ideas and technology is changing our brains each and every day. And sleep is boosting the process, so the very next day, we can have greater ideas, greater insight, and invent greater technology. Luke, brain rewiring? Lots happens when your brain's falling asleep. And if you don't sleep, then you suffer some consequences. So the brain has a special part called the prefrontal cortex in humans, and that's the brain's seal. As we age, the cortex starts to lose volume. We lose neurons there and in a part of the brain called the hippocampus that does a lot of our memory wiring. Sleep deprivation is kind of a, a double whammy as you're aging. And as it was also explained to me, is uh, your, your brain produces uh, byproducts, you know, much like an engine produces uh, exhaust gas. And that stuff has to be washed out by deep sleep. Uh, they were called beta amyloids or something, and, and, but they're not good. In fact, they're linked to early cognitive dysfunction. So your sleep is crucial based on what I've been told. So you're in the right business, Farouk, because you help us get a good sleep. Yeah, and, and equally important whilst we sleep, as you probably know, that your body also goes through a recovery phase. Uh, so not only cognitively, but also emotionally at the same time. So we have to allow our body to get into that deep REM sleep. And whether it's the right pillow or the right mattress, whatever the environment that you create, uh, these are key important things to allow your body to go through that recovery. Now we need to talk about sleep disruptors. The most common, snoring. Why do we snore? Watch this. If the airway in the middle of the night becomes smaller, now the body is trying to fit the same volume or the same size of breath through a small pipe. And that small pipe, the only way to fit a regular size breath is for air in that region to move faster. And that faster air going through a small pipe can cause a vibration, and that's what the sound of snoring comes from. And Jeff, that describes your personal experience. Yeah, uh, apparently I snored. Uh, didn't bother me, so I really can't speak to it firsthand. But at the end of the day, I didn't think I had any problem sleeping. Okay, I would go to bed at a fairly regular time, wake up with an alarm clock at a fairly regular time. Um, but when I had it studied, um, I suck at sleeping. My sleep efficiency was way, way below norm. Uh, both in terms of how long I slept and the quality of sleep. Um, and that was because of something called sleep apnea. And basically, um, you know, you stop breathing. Uh, I think I was measured 318 times in just over six hours of sleep. Not good. And when you're carrying a few extra pounds, as many seniors do, uh, if you've got heart conditions, respiratory conditions already pre-existing, it just makes it considerably worse. So you need to take action, get tested. People are not really aware of how well they're sleeping. Exactly. So if you're, uh, yeah, and you, I had how, no idea, you're right. And how right. you can find out often is how you're doing in the afternoon. Are you very drowsy? Do you need a nap? Do you need a long nap? Are you making errors, etc.? Or you can go to a sleep clinic and get tested <laughs> and they'll let you know. And for me, it was, I was getting my six, six and a half hours of sleep, yeah. uh, but I wasn't feeling all that rested all the time. And since we've then uh, got an adjustable base, so now I sleep elevated two to three inches, yeah. My wife doesn't uh, would nudge me to wake up from the snoring because that's eliminated, and I feel much more refreshed. So it speaks to these well, maybe I early I got onset. rid of the wife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well. from the, uh, yeah, on the research side, yeah, it, it is actually the case that there, you know, the bed that you're sleeping on makes a difference, and uh, okay. it's as you would expect. If you're sleeping on a bed of rocks, uh, you won't be able to sleep very well. Exactly. So, um, and, and I guess you've, uh, you know, the, uh, the time factor as well. There comes a point where you have to get rid of your mattress okay. and get a new one. Yeah, we want to talk a lot more about all of this, but we're going to take a short break. But before that, we asked you about your sleep routine. Well, I do everything I shouldn't be doing. 
like I play on my iPad and I sometimes go for a run and uh, I keep active and I don't do any of the things I should be doing to have a restful night. I listen to um, some uh, meditation apps, uh, some sleep stories, uh, things like that. Yeah, maybe read a little bit, something financial, which I'm in, interested in. It puts me to sleep even. <laughs> Carpe diem, seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. We're discussing sleep. How do we sleep well as we age? We know there's a nap for that. Perhaps some yoga? Watch this clip from Healing Yoga that airs on our sister station, One TV. <laughs> Just come onto your hands and knees. And then maybe you have some rolled up towels or rolled up blankets. You can use that to support your head. We'll come into this child's pose. The seat goes back. And then the forehead comes on to the support. The arms come out and we rest. We start to feel a little bit easier in the breath. Let the out breath be complete and pause at the end of the complete out breath. That will help you calm your mind. Let the in breaths move the ribs out and up. Feel this telescoping effect. Maybe you feel your sit bones moving back and your ribs moving out and up towards your shoulders. And then to come out of the pose, you just take your arms and then use your upper body strength to lift you up. So if you're having trouble sleeping, you can try child's pose with a support under the forehead. So we have yoga, we have uh, apps, we have mattress, we have pillows. Luke, what is what advice do you have? We just heard about um, uh, yoga, which relaxation is a good thing to do if you're because uh, physical arousal is one of the big causes of insomnia. So if you can bring your tension down. Uh, that's good. Um, you know, avoiding caffeine, because caffeine is an activator. Now, often you hear as a recommendation, oh, I'll quit the caffeine before bed. Actually, if you can take it out altogether, if you've got serious problems, you might find a big difference. You try that one. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about your app. Okay, so I have an app called My Sleep Button, and the way it works is actually, it reads to you a collection of words or phrases, night. like night, that you're meant to imagine. So you imagine these things one after another, so night, you would imagine the night time. A hill. A hill, you imagine a hill. So what you're doing is you're shuffling your thoughts, and while you do that, that keeps your mind off uh, your concerns. That means that they won't be keeping you awake. But also, we want to put the user in a state that's similar to falling asleep. And when you fall asleep normally, your mind starts to drift. Your thinking is less coherent. It's a bit like you've had a couple of drinks, and then you pass out and fall asleep. So we're, the theory is that if we can get a brain, the brain into a state that's very similar to sleep, we can trick it into thinking that, hey, I'm falling asleep. It's okay to fall asleep. You know, one of the things uh, in alignment with what you're saying is, you know, with you, if you get a bed that has um, a built-in massage unit, and you're laying there and allowing your body to just kind of go through that, you're, you're kind of experiencing and feeling that in your body taking your mind and thoughts away from everything else. And that's really what will help uh, kind of ease that. I'm glad you mentioned uh, massage because tension is one of the major sources of, of arousal. And we often carry a lot of tension. Uh, massage is a, is a nice way to get rid of that tension. It's less effortful. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get a plug in for drinks. Uh, one or two shots of medicinal scotch at night <laughs> is, is a great, yeah. No, all right. <laughs> it, it'll help you fall asleep. But Sorry, the wrong way. <laughs> but then it'll wake you up. Yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> Sorry. you know, certainly in my case where I've been diagnosed with, with apnea, I'm, I'm uh, now forced to resort to a machine to help me make sure the breathing is done properly. Um, but it has changed both the, the quality of sleep and the deepness that I uh, attain uh, during sleep and the length of time. What about the position of your sleep? Can that affect you? Watch this. Experts advise that the best side to sleep on is the left side. Here's why. 1. 
promote proper lymphatic drainage. The lymph system carries important elements like proteins, glucose, metabolites, and those elements that must be filtered by the lymph nodes. Two, anatomical reasons. You may not remember now, but both the stomach and the pancreas are mostly on the left side of our body. If our sleeping position is on left side, we favor better digestion. Three, health of your heart. Over 80% of the heart is on the left side of the body, and through the simple act of sleeping on the left side, we will benefit its health in a simple and natural way. Four, are you someone who takes naps? If you are someone who always takes a nap or someone who feels obligated to do so after eating a lot, then remember to sleep on the left side. This will favor digestion. Five, for the health of our spleen. If we sleep on the left side of our body, we will help get our fluids directed to the spleen in a simpler way, favoring the natural sense of gravity in our body. Most of our lymphatic system performs its task on the left side. Fascinating tips, right? And for what you were saying, you, I didn't know that. Yeah, right? it's, it's amazing. I, I mean, we've been in the industry for such a long period of time, but the, the points raised are critical. The, you know, people often come in and we see, we ask them, how do you normally sleep? And, well, I sleep on my stomach, and that's predominantly how I sleep. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to train people through the different types of mattresses and pillows that sleeping on your side is the best. I didn't realize sleeping on your left side is, uh, is so good, so that was interesting. Well, a physiotherapist of mine suggests that I sleep with a pillow, um, a thin pillow actually under my knees, because I tend to sleep on my back. A lot of people have preference, so you have to consider that as well. Um, and I'd say if somebody's got physical problems um, that you know seeing a physiotherapist and talking to them about sleep could give them some uh, could give them some interesting tips what tricks have you found to get a good night's sleep my perception was I was getting a good night's sleep um, um, I've been getting up on my own without alarm clocks at between 5 15 and 5 30 like for 50 years you know started as a farm kid I guess that's where it started but um, didn't suffer from any ill effects, didn't have to nap or... Um, and so I, I had no idea. I drink coffee, literally. I can drink a cup of coffee and go to bed 15 minutes later. It doesn't, there was nothing that was an early warning signal per se until I took this study, okay? Got involved in something and it was aiming for something completely different, but through that, uh, the suggestion was made, baby, you better go get that checked. Okay, so the way I get good night's sleep now is through the aid of a machine that um, forces air, as you saw earlier, it, it just forces air in to, um, to make sure your uh, airway does not collapse, which is a problem associated with aging. Not to beat the caffeine thing to death, but a lot of people think that caffeine doesn't affect their sleep, but it actually, the effects are, well, are yeah. unconscious. Your sleep is lighter, it's uh, more fragmented, uh, you're more likely to wake up. Caffeine, the blue light from our devices. Right. They don't watch movies or anything like that. Oh, so that yeah. lady that we saw that uh, place on her iPad, that's the wrong yeah. thing. Well, the, the nice thing about the iPhone now, and uh, I think they have this on Samsung as well, is that there's night shift, yeah. which uh, basically allows you to turn off that blue light, right? So you've got two things. You've got the stimulation of the phone. Now we have a sleep app, um, but it all, it's, it's, its utility will depend on your self-regulation. If you're the kind of person who has to check their email or can't stop themselves from checking email or whatever, then you shouldn't have the phone by your bedside, right? And of course, you need to turn your notifications off. Turn the no notifications off, only keep it with you if it is not disruptive. I turn it on silent. Mm -hmm. the, the next thing I wanna hear from that is my alarm. So here's my tricks. <laughs> Melatonin and a silk sleep mask, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> We're gonna take a break, we'll be right back. But first, let's hear more about what you have to say about sleep. Well, I got one of those uh, fancy foam pillows. It's awesome. And yes, my girlfriend's mattress needs replacing and I notice a difference. Well, you want to make sure that your you know, mattress and your pillow are comfy, cozy, that's for sure. One that suits your back and your, you know, gives you enough support. It's very important to have the right kind of pillow. I've got lots of pillows on my bed. One head, but about 20 pillows. And I have to prop up my neck correctly to make sure that I'm breathing correctly. Carpe Diem. 
seizing the day for Canadians as we age. It's now time to go around the table for our panel's final thoughts on sleep. Farouk? Look, you can't get a quick fix by buying a mattress online. You need to take the time. And it's important that, uh, especially when you're looking for a mattress, and I'm not sure how your experience uh, has been, but you know, you, the, what you're looking for is something that's gonna balance your temperature, it's gonna keep you relaxed, and there's no motion in the bed. As long as you're looking for those kind of three things, then it's important. Well, sleep is important for your cognitive function. It's important for your emotions. It's important for your physical health. And the good news about sleep is that we can get better sleep if we do the kinds of things that are better for our overall health, that are better for our brain. And we can protect ourselves that way. Like exercise and diet. Like the exer usual suspects. Exercise, managing stress. And Jeff? And I'll, I'll echo what both gentlemen have said. Uh, it, is, it is crucial to have good quality, uh, high quality sleep. And uh, so I'm gonna encourage you that if you even suspect that it's not, um, you know, you're not there, um, tired, yawning through the day, whatever you're looking at, just go and find out. Talk to the professionals, get tested if necessary. It's not hard at all. And it can be done at no cost in most sleep centers. So go get tested, make sure because you cannot afford to miss out on a good night's sleep. So much more to talk about, gentlemen. We could do this for another hour. Thank you so much for being with us. And I'll want to talk to you individually because I need to go shopping and we need to talk a little bit more about uh, the psychology of sleep. And that's our show. Remember, as our CART president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So stay zippy and carpe diem. Seize your day. <laughs>